Now then, everybody, I'm a man with not a lot of time on his hands. I get to paint three or four times a week, maybe. And I want to know what the quickest way to paint my miniatures is. Problem is, I don't like batch painting. So is batch painting really the quickest way to paint a whole bunch of minis? I'm Will, this is GDS Miniatures, and we're going to find out. As I said at the top, I'm a father, I'm a husband, I work full time. My painting time is limited, and I want to be making the most of my painting time by getting miniatures done in a timely fashion. I want to make it clear that I really enjoy painting anything, any miniatures, I just love painting them. So the amount of time I spend on a miniature itself isn't the issue here. I just want to make sure I'm doing things efficiently and to a decent standard. I really loathe batch painting. I find it really monotonous. It doesn't, it just doesn't have the same feel and doesn't bring me the same joy as painting an individual miniature. So I want to know if it really is any quicker or am I just kidding myself? Here's my experiment. I painted up this test model for my uh, Death Core of Krieg kill team. It took four hours to paint. However, I did completely redo his uh, jacket and trousers because I didn't like the way I'd done them originally. So with that in mind and the fact that it's a test model, so you're kind of figuring out where everything goes, it takes you a little longer anyway. I'm going to say this model took me three hours. So I've got nine more of them. And if I was to do them individually, like that single Death Core of Krieg, then I would be taking around 27 hours to paint them all. Anything less than that from batch painting is going to be a stamp of approval for batch painting as the fastest method of painting a whole bunch of mini. But like I said in the intro, I only get to paint three or four times a week. And at most, it's by about three hours a session. So I'm going to take this day by day show you how I got on on each day, talk a little bit about some of the frustrations I had with batch painting, and we'll see at the end how much time the whole look took me doing it in the efficient batch painting method. Day one of the batch painting experiment. That is a terrible accent, why did you do that? Day one, I'm gonna start with Rakar Flesh. And this is gonna paint the gas masks, the wraps on their legs, and the bit of sleeping bag they've got over their backpacks. Next, we're gonna do some more base coating with Mournfang Brown. And with these, we're going to paint all the boots, the weapons, the backpacks, the kind of box that their gas masks clip into, and the gloves. And that's the end of day one. Spent three hours getting to this stage. All the miniatures at the same point. Day two. Day two was probably the biggest part of the whole uh, batch painting, and that was doing all the coats and trousers. Base coating those in the fang, and this took the longest time because it's the biggest area to cover, obviously. And towards the end, I started to base coat some of the metallics, but this was a two hour session. So we're five hours down and we still haven't finished our base coat. So we're into day three, and I painted all the fiddly bits of brown that were on the miniatures. So they've got like belt straps and straps across their fronts. Those all got painted. Small straps on their backpacks got painted. Anything that required a finer detailed brush this was the time to do that base coat. I also finished off all the metallics, iron warriors on helmets and shoulder pads and guns, a little bit of gold on the Aquila on their helmets. And then we did the tank of fuel on the flamer. So we started off with a Rekar Flesh base coat and then put a nice coat of yellow over the top of that. So that was a three and a half hour session. We're eight and a half hours in and we have just finished our base coats. Hopefully things are gonna speed up now, otherwise this whole batch painting is the fastest way of painting a whole bunch of miniatures is dead in the water. So the first thing we did on day four was we began highlighting up the flamers using uh, lighter and lighter yellows. Didn't go too mad on this because I'm gonna coat it all in a wash a bit later on to dull it down a bit. And that is the next step in fact is all the washes. So we put a wash of Drukey Violet all over the blues, so the coats and the trousers. Uh, Agrax it shade all of the browns and no more oil of the metallics and the flamer. Then when all those washes are dry, we start our first highlight, bring some Rakar flesh back onto the gas mask and onto the leg wraps. Another three and a half hour session done, basing and shading is done and we're 11 hours into this process. Things are starting to look up for the old batch painting methodology. So on day five, we started our highlights proper with highlighting all the coats and trousers. So the first thing we do is re-establish our mid-tone by painting everything back in the fang and then we slowly add lighter and lighter blues to that colour to brighten up our highlight colour and then we add that to all the highest ridges on the coats and the trousers. 
This island took a fairly long time to do, so much so that it ran over into day six. So on day six, we finished highlighting up our, all of our uniform parts and we started to highlight the browns. Between day five and six, we've spent over four hours, so up to 15 hours for all you people counting at home. Day seven, we did some more highlighting. Finished highlighting all the browns and then we moved on to the white highlighting for the gas mask and the uh, bedroll across their backpacks. So day seven was another two hour session, so we're up to 17 hours. So here we are on day eight and we're still highlighting. But now we're highlighting all of our metallic parts. So I'm using lighter and lighter silvers to catch the edges of the helmets, the shoulder pads and all of the weaponry. Then we can start doing, adding some details that are not part of the other uh, miniatures. So for example, on the flamer I wanted to do a bit of muzzle burn. So I got my washes out and we washed it in green wash, a purple wash, a flesh wash, all getting progressively smaller amounts of wash towards the barrel end. And then we took a black dry brush and dry brush that to give us a nice muzzle burn effect. It was also time to do some plasma. So for the plasma, I painted all the coils a bright white. And then I made a pink glaze, a very thin pink glaze. And what I started to do was I went over all the coils uh, in this glaze and the pink started to run into the recesses. And then I took the same pink and I did the outside edges of the plasma coils onto the gun itself. And I did a little bit of OSL on one of the faces and up his arm to give that pink glow. And I gave this a couple of passes with the glaze to uh, establish that intense color to give that OSL effect. Very simple OSL, not trying to push it too hard. It's meant to be a little subtle thing to give the miniature a bit of interest. And that was a three hour session, bringing our total up to 20. And to be honest, I have stopped here. There was a lot more I could do to these miniatures to really improve them. I could do a lot more with the eyes. They're just painted red, but they could be highlighted and made to look a little more reflective. I also haven't done any of the medical bits and bobs on the medic he's drawing out something from uh, from a bottle with his syringe i could have painted that up i just kind of haven't and that's because i was getting bored of batch painting so here we are at the end time for a conclusion so we got the death core of creed kill team up to a decent standard in 20 hours and we estimated at the beginning that if i'd have done them individually it'd take me 27 hours so without a doubt doing it this way is quicker towards the end of the eighth day of painting the same models over and over and over i was getting sick of the sides of them and i wasn't enjoying my painting as much as i could have been um as the day after i finished the death core krieg i picked up one of the orc commandos I only spent an hour painting it and i was having a joyous time the question now becomes does that saving in time represent enough for me to get bored of painting the miniatures and that's a question I can't answer at the moment. I think batch painting needs to be part of a mini painter's repertoire especially if you're painting things up to an army. Everything needs to be similar so you don't want to be wandering too far away from the plan. It's much easier to wander when you're painting a single figure. So let's be clear here batch painting is the fastest way to paint a whole bunch of models but I'd love to hear from you. Do you like batch painting or you like me and prefer to paint single figures for the majority of your painting? Please leave me a comment, tell me all about it, tell me if I'm an idiot, tell me that I'm just too slow at painting, which is entirely fair, I am really slow at painting. While you're there, why don't you give the video a like and if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any of the cracking content I've got coming up. Thanks for watching everyone, hope to see you in the next one.